today I'm working on some foley as part of a sound design project that I'm doing for a short film so I thought I'd show you a bit of that because it's quite cool. I can't say too much about the film but it will be released eventually and I'm sure you'll see it and it's going to be a really cool film. Um, what I have to do is create sound design elements and that's going to be a mixture of sounds that I create in the computer, some, some sounds that I get from libraries and manipulate, sounds that I've recorded atmospherically like um, I think I've got a bus in there even though there's no buses in the film it's just the magic of sound design anyway yes <laughs> there are some sounds that were recorded uh, on set although there's no sync sound for the film so there's no sound that actually directly matches the picture what I have to do is take take the elements of sound that were recorded on set and elements that I find and elements that I create and put them all together to make a sensible sonic environment for the film in Logic Pro and um, I can't show you too much of this because it will um, be a bit spoilery for the film but what we basically do is we have we have the, the, um, the film playing in a window and I build up sound elements if I just close that window for a sec I, I build up elements of sounds so I've, I've got a bunch of um, library sounds that I found and that I've manipulated and then I've got a bunch of um, sounds that I've uh, recorded in completely different environments but I've manipulated in a way to make certain sound effects that I think are appropriate to set the mood for the film. Um, I'm recording all the foley in my living room. It's not a sonically treated environment but it's not particularly reflective. My biggest problem is I have um, hot air heating which is currently drying out my rubber duck as you do. Um, I mean, obviously the heating has to go off. Anything else that's going to make a noise during this process has to go off. But anyway, the basic idea for the Foley is I'm going to be recording everything using... <laughs> oh fuck it, I'm leaving that in. I'm going to be recording everything using a short shotgun mic. Um, this has a very narrow pickup pattern and usually for Foley I would use a large diaphragm condenser. I've got a very nice Sontronics condenser that I normally use but because this isn't the best environment acoustically, but it's not too reflective, I feel like having something with a bit of a tighter pattern is probably a good idea. So, what we're going to do for Foley is um, I'm going to loop the video for certain elements. For example, there's two guys walking through a forest. And I've got a few things to try. Um, but for the sort of footsteps through undergrowth, I'm experimenting with different packaging materials. I'll probably just try some things like newspaper and I should probably stop that because it's quite annoying um, because the film is quite sort of otherworldly um, I'm sort of experimenting with different resonant surfaces for footsteps so I've got things like old drum heads and when you hit them obviously you get a percussive sound but you get a resonant tail after that and you can damp that down by pushing on it so you've got quite a lot of control over the sound and of course anything I do can be digitally manipulated afterwards as well. Um, I've got quite a big drum head which has a really lovely, I can't demonstrate with one hand, but it has a really lovely resonance to it. I might end up using this for some footsteps. Um, the way that I'll record things like the drum heads probably, um, as well as using my, um, my shotgun mic rig which has fallen apart, is I have these... Um, I have these contact mics that I've made and what they are is they're piezoelectric disc it's just soldered onto a cable with um, like a normal unbalanced guitar jack plug on the end. Now um, the, the, way that, the way that a contact mic works is it's um, so it's piezoelectric which means um, it's a thin sheet of crystal and when you apply force to that crystal you deform the crystal it puts out an electric current so that way any vibration that you put through the surface that you're recording is deforming the crystal so you get um, an electric current that's analogous to that deformation so you have an electric current that looks like the sound that was traveling through the surface in effect it these are kind of the opposite of how um, how uh, a digital watch works because in a digital watch you apply a current to a crystal and that crystal vibrates at a known rate and that's why you get a very accurate time out of a digital watch. This is that in reverse, you apply a force to a crystal and you get an electric current out. This is another contact mic that I've made. So that's a uh, piezoelectric disc in a mustard tin full of nuts and bolts. And again, it's just got a guitar jack plug on the end, an unbalanced quarter inch jack plug. And I'll, 
if I put this on a surface that I'm hitting, not only do you get the vibration of whatever the thing is that you're hitting and the resonance of that, you also get the, the percussive effect of the metalwork moving around inside. So I might use that. Again, this big the thing about Foley is it, it doesn't have to be like someone's walking through a forest. It doesn't have to literally be footsteps that you're hearing. It has to be something that your brain believes are footsteps. And in this case, because it's quite a strange ethereal film ethereal ethereal excuse me i learned a lot of my language through reading because i didn't have any friends when i was a kid because it's kind of an ethereal film i feel like using sounds that aren't directly what the sound is is actually you know it could be a cool thing to do it might not work and then we might end up just doing footsteps in a tray like your standard foley that's fine um a lot of this is try stuff see if it works so what else have we got um a couple of long cables to plumb me into my um, audio interface, which is underneath the computer over there. Oh, that's just useful bits of tape and stuff for attaching the the um, contact mics. A knife. Um, I might have to stab some things. Um, I'm not sure what I'm stabbing yet. Possibly this apple. Apple for very literal, in, disappointingly literal. In fact, um, there's a someone takes a bite out of something, so I have a apple. And I don't particularly like apples, so I'm kind of suffering for my art. Um, spatula. Now this is um, this may or may not work. You can't really hear it, but there you go. Can you guess what that sound effect might be for? No, because it sounds a bit rubbish. Um, yeah, we've got a bit of a sort of drawn sword effect, and I'm, this is I had a bit of a desperate route through the kitchen cupboard. Um, this was the closest thing I could find to something that's got a free surface that can vibrate and a handle that can hold. Um, something else I might try if basically anything that I do in here I can send via shotgun mic to my computer and then that's nice. Um, it means I'm in, in situ and I can watch the video. Anything I want to do that needs me to not be in situ, for example this sounds crazy but I've got um, uh, clothes error upstairs and it fell over and when it fell over by accident the other day it made the most wonderful noise so I'm going to try and recreate that and possibly use that um, anything like that I need to be away from a computer I can either try and put the video on um, onto my laptop so I can still watch it looping while I'm recording the effects or I can just take a handheld recorder go upstairs and go completely non-sync throw my clothes horse on the floor and just get the sound and try and manipulate it so it matches later. Same thing goes if I decide that this the packing material is not a good analogue for pushing through a forest, I might just go out to the forest near me and do some very literal recording of effects. So that's basically it. Um, hopefully you'll see the, the results of this at a festival near you sometime in the next few months.